Hey, good morning, Rudy. It's uh, great to be here with you um, today to discuss process mining and what we see in the industry. I am very excited to be here and uh, discuss the latest trends and <clears throat> our plans going forward. Um, so my name is Dino Di Mattia. I'm a director at PwC and I'm heading up our process mining and analytics efforts internally. Uh, Rudy, if you just want to introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, of course. So, you know, first of all, thank you for, for having me. Um, well, unofficially, I think I'm the process mining dinosaur at UiPath. So I joined the company in 2019 when UiPath acquired Process Gold. And Process Gold used to be the very first process mining company in the world, as far as I know. So we started off in 2010 in Frankfurt, in Germany. And, you know, we focused on, on consulting around process mining. At some point, we realized that we do a better job when we develop our own software. So we did. And in 2019, UiPath acquired Process Code and my new official role is I'm the vice president for process mining and our, and our head ambassador evangelist for all of our discovery products. Well, great. And Rudy, I'm, I'm very excited to be here and uh, give us the opportunity to discuss this uh, this topic. Um, but first of all, Rudy, like one thing I'd really, you know, like to hear from you, like as the dinosaur of, uh, you know, process mining, <laughs> what is actually process mining? We hear so much about it, but can you just, you know, kind of yeah. in your terms describe what it actually is? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, back in, back in the, after 2000, um, I used to be a consultant with IBM and some other companies. And you know how this works. If you want to find out how a process is really executed, how it's really run. Um, you will have some workshops and people will tell you all kinds of stories. At the end of the day, you will probably have more, more processes than participants and everybody will tell you a different story. And unfortunately, not everything will be completely, uh, you know, completely true. And process mining takes a very different approach. So instead of asking people, we look at data, data that is left behind after you, know, you support or you run business processes with ERP systems, workflow, business process management, because every posting of a document is leaving some digital footprints behind. And now imagine you take all this data and with some very, very fancy um, algorithm, you will be able to reconstruct the real processes, every single step, every single variation, every single deviation as well. So you fully understand what it is. You know, the best picture to, to describe process mining probably is it's like an X-ray system for business processes. If it hurts, or if you want to avoid pain in the future, take the data, push the magic button, and you know what's going on. And that, that's such an exciting um, technology, Rudy, and something that we embrace um, you know, fully within our organization. And just hearing clients talk about the excitement in the market is also what excites us and what excites us working together here. So thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Um, Rudy, maybe one, one question that I have uh, bef before we go into some of the, the details here. What is, you know, UiPath is known for, you know, a lot of different technologies and, and tools, one of them being RPA and something that's been around for quite some time now. But maybe you can just touch briefly on like what the connection is between process mining and automation as a whole. Well, first of all, I see, I see automation as part of a bigger picture. So, you know, the biggest picture I can think of is transformation. And you guys, three, you are the experts about transformation. Then part of transformation is improvement. And part of improvement of processes is automation. And it's like, you know, just take my picture again, X-ray. So if it hurts and you want to find out what the problem is, you know, you, you take some X-ray pictures and you will understand that maybe you have a broken arm, but no X-ray in the world can heal the broken arm. It will not fix the problem. You, you, you need some therapy, you need some, you know, some treatment. And this is where, you know, of course not everything can be automated and should be, not everything should be automated. But if we understand what the challenges are and we have a solution to fix this problem with our RPA technology, with automation, then we have a perfect fit between you know, understanding the problem and solving the problem. So we have the tools. And of course, you know, if you think about, about, about X-ray and you think about the therapy, what is missing in the picture? You guys, you are missing because you are like the experts, you understand what the problem is and you can propose the, you know, the solution to the customer and using the, the, the tools. So this is you know, what, I, what I really like about our cooperation here between PwC and, and UiPath, because we have the software and you have the knowledge and experience to, 
you know, to make it happen. Yeah, and, and I, I appreciate that. And, and Rudy, <laughs> you know, I have been doing business process management, you know, and all its variations for a long, long time. And, you know, for us to stitch together process flows back in the day, even in, you know, Visio and other tools has been a very cumbersome process. And actually understanding what's going on has been the biggest challenge to, to drive real transformation here. So this is what we're excited to, to dive into this, to actually understand the foundation of what the, the client is doing and then using that right to, to drive our transformational efforts with the clients. So Dino, with all of your experience, you know, let, let's turn this around. Um, what is your experience in the market? What do you see currently going on? What is happening? Yeah, and, and, and maybe Rudy, I can I can, you know, take a take a step back because. To me, process mining is such a powerful technology, and it's part of what we would call process intelligence, right? And process intelligence really is, you know, founded on, on you know, the, the idea that a seamless, a frictionless process is really the bedrock of every organization out there. Now, the, the concept of, you know, a, a process being the bedrock of a good organization is nothing new, right? Really think lean management, process re-engineering, operating model, offshoring, outsourcing. So the idea to create a you know seamless process is nothing new, and there have been major investments into that you know for decades in the past. Now these you know major investments have had I would say at times limited success, and why is that? It is because we have used or we have you know tried to build these transformations, uh, build these, you know, reorganizations, this process re-engineering based on the perceived process, sometimes even based on the process we hope that that was going on. But now what we can do is we can actually base all these transformations, the reorganizations, the automations, everything on the actual process. And this is what the game changer is. That's, that is why we're here. That's why we're so excited about it. Um, and we now get this, what you described, they, the current state, actual depiction of the process, and we can base our efforts on that. Um, so we see clients right now, Rudy, that are excited about it, right? I talk about this now on a daily basis, and our clients understand the value, and they understand the value, you know, sometimes in theory, sometimes actual as they do it. So we see the clients do a whole different bunch of things. We see them, you know, diving into it with a POC, a proof of concept, to just get their feet wet and to prove out internally, hey, this is a great thing and this can help us actually going forward and this is something we should do in every single process that we do. We also see organizations that have it taken it all already to the next level here that already have understood and scale it and try to drive this you know, partially centrally into the organization. But really what we're also seeing in the, <clears throat> in, in the industry is Clients, they understand the concept, the theory behind it, and they're excited about it, but they still struggle to understand, hey, where do we start? How do I make this meaningful? So that's also right now in the mix and like all these client conversations that we have, you know, the excitement is there, the understanding is there, you know, use cases are there, but there's still, you know, clients at very different stages of, of the journey here. Right, so what, do you know, Understood. And what would you say do you think are the biggest challenges when applying process mining? So to me, it is from, from what I see, it is clients that have to not just understand the value, but A, getting all the, the, uh, the stakeholders together and finding funding to prove this out. And also the understanding of like, how can we apply this in our particular organization? Now, there are use cases out there, Rudy, as you may know, in the more standardized, right, procure to pay or other processes, but there's a lot of, um, you know, qualifications out there. To me and to many people we talk to, there's so much more to it, right? This can be applied to a whole bunch of different use cases. And I know that we have been working together on, you know, a, uh, you know, a different type of use case. But proving this out and getting this actually started right now seems for many clients just a, a hurdle to get over. There's the excitement, there's often the budgets, but actually then taking it and making this real has been a bit of a challenge. And do you see particular industries or areas or even you know, locations, geos, where, where process mining is, is better 
Sweden for for you know better position than in others? So I would say to answer that question, Rudy, process mining can be and should be applied across probably all industries. Now, and the reason that I'm saying this provocative statement is to me, this is the right technology as long as I have a process that's high volume, high value, or even high risk. And to me, every yeah. industry, every jurisdiction is going to have processes that fit that, that panel. Now, this may be in varying proportions. Having said that though, right now, the processes that we see are most prominent are definitely some of the finance processes for cure to pay or to cash, where we, we just have, and they fit the, the, the pattern that I just described very well. So those are the ones that have been on the forefront and what we also now see is that, um, especially the financial services industry that has been probably lagging behind a little bit, is really jumping at this and understands that, hey, there's so many more use cases outside of your traditional finance processes yeah. where we can apply this. Yeah, I, I think the financial industry is a great, great use case. You know, I always keep saying that if you look, like, let's say, if you look at a company like, like a car manufacturing company, I mean, they, they really have to move around a lot of atoms to make some money, you know, actually producing physical goods, producing cars. Of course, there's a lot of data available, but if you think about in the financial industry, like banking, insurance companies, I mean, there's only data. And data is, you know, where process mining actually lives. So yeah, I, I fully agree. We see this also happening that the financial industry, banking, insurance, and everybody, you know, who runs a fully digitized business is now really starting to invest and looking into, into process mining because the complexity of nowadays systems, I mean, we have processes, you know, not being executed in one system only, but across different systems. And if you really try to understand how these processes run end to end, discover bottlenecks, compliance issues, RPA potential, you really have to approach this in a different way because asking people, you know, what's going on simply doesn't work. That, that's correct, Rudy. And uh, having subject matter experts um, to confirm our findings here or to confirm the data-based approach, I think is important, which leads me to a question, Rudy, with, we talk about data, we talk about data-driven, um, you know, depiction of processes, data-driven analyses and data-driven even, you know, automation. Where does the uh, where does the staff where does the subject matter expert within these companies fall? What's their value add, and you know what's the impact on them going forward? I'm not sure if I understand your your question correctly, but um, you know what what we typically see when we start with process mining back in 2010. Actually, my very first one of my very first meetings was with PwC in Germany. Really, just a coincidence. And one lady asked me about how, or well, when did we last presented this to the internal audit? And I can tell you, I was a little bit shocked, like, oh my God, what's wrong? Why internal audit? And she said, no, 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 guys, but the transparency you provide would be worth gold for, for, for internal audit. So we reached out to some, some internal heads, heads of internal audit in a, in, a, in, a, in a bank in Frankfurt, and surprisingly, they immediately jumped on it. So... You know, I actually think if you if you look at process mining, if you want to improve your business process, there are only two ways, or actually only two things you can do. You can either try to increase efficiency or reduce risk. And I really believe that no matter what you do, it falls in one of these two categories. So in process mining, you know, you can, you can do both with it. You can, you can increase efficiency when you look at the majority of your cases, you know, the variations where, something like maybe 40, 50, 60% of your cases are handled um, with. And if you can improve the, th the throughput times and the flow, then you really gain something. On the other side, if you, if you think about internal audit, I mean, nobody is voluntarily talking to internal audit about the problems they, they have. So most of the time, you know, everything is good, please go away. Um, but with, with process mining, we can really reveal what's happening and, and even see the, the smallest variations, deviations and exceptions. And this is where the risk typically is. So improve efficiency, focus on the majority of your cases, decrease risk or reduce risk, look for the exceptions. So we see people, you know, when we talk to, to companies, we have 
people from internal audit, operation excellence, we have the process owners. So, you know, it, it really depends. Risk, efficiency, or very often both. This what you what what you mean with your question? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a very good depiction, Rudy, and something that we also see in uh, you know uh, our efforts currently, and just the people we talk to who's driving who's interested in this really varies from you know a centralized COE all the way down you know to business or even internal audit people that do have the the need to understand um, you know the current state, and I think you really articulated it so well, um, you know why it's important to use process mining um, above your you know, traditional workshops. We have the actual process as we know it's happening more the day-to-day -day processes and then the risk that usually more materializes in what we would call right, the tail end, right, the 0.5% of the uh, variations in your process, something that's probably not even worth bringing up in a workshop if even possible. And that is such a good way to, to depict it here, Rudy. So, yeah, you know, so the, yeah, the way I put it um, very often to customers, well, you know, when, when, I, when I'm pitching process mining, I tell them that before process mining, you ask people about what the process is. How does it look like? And with process mining, you know what it is. So you, you switch to why. So from what or how to why. And because it's, it's database, it's fact-based, it's a totally different discussion and it's so much more productive. Absolutely. But, you know, you know, I think we need to come to, to an end slowly. I would love to chat with you forever. But um, what do you think about, about the future? So what is coming? So from our perspective, right? Um, I think the, uh, the way that process mining is used today is very powerful, right? So we're using it, as I mentioned earlier, as a you know, proof of concept for you know, a very specific project, a very specific objective um, to, to get something done and to prove it out. Now we see organizations, like I also mentioned earlier, that you know, do this on a more scalable basis. Now, what we think is going to happen is that this is going to be integrated in everything that we do. So when we think process mining, right, right now, given that it's still new, people think about it from a one time, show me what the process is today and let me see, you know, what this could, you know, what type of value, whether it's, you know, risk reduction or efficiency increase, what it could bring to me in a finite way. The way that we see and I see process mining going forward is that I have it actually as an ongoing, continuous enhancement, continuous program within my organization, ideally even driven by the people in my organization. So not just top down, but also bottoms up. So understanding, discovering my process, you know, on a more ongoing basis and not just understanding and seeing, you know, the variations of your process in one-time situations, but ongoing will help me to adapt to anything that may, you know, change during time. Again, think COVID when things change very rapidly, you know, people in organization are very much overwhelmed of like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I don't even know what to adapt to because, you know, I don't have a full view into what's happening. So to me, the change of like a process project-based approach to in a continuous ongoing view of my, my processes from, right, having real-time dashboards, having, you know, management level adaption type uh, capabilities all the way to, you know, not just a top-down organization doing a process mining project for once, but actually using it, you know, on an ongoing basis, that's where we're headed to. Understanding what's going on in your organization at any and all times, that is the power, that is where we wanna to get to. Yeah, I fully agree. And this is, this is exactly what we currently are working on. You know, when you have acquired process code, it was all about understanding the process and discovering RPA potential. But I think by now everybody understands that the, the, let's say the use case where you are monitoring your business processes, you look for exceptions, you look for violations. And I mean, let's face it, um, mistakes will happen. Neither the bots nor people are perfect. So every time we discover that something is wrong in the process, we don't want, we don't want to wait. So we actually want to actively control the process. So this is why we have now integrated our process mining platform and we are working on a much much tighter and seamless integration. You will see this in a few weeks, but we have this, this integration with Action Center. So every time we discover something is wrong, we can reach out to people, notify people about the problems, we can trigger bots, 
Um, we have a new API technology built in, in our platform so we can reach out to any kind of system, get data from there, send data over there. I mean, think about it like, you know, maybe you know this, this IFTTT concept. So if this, then that. So that's exactly what we are working on. So if we discover that something is wrong in the process, then we, the system will know what to do, will reach out to the systems, will reach out to people and will actually work. So, you know, we'll try to fix the problem, to fix the process before even we, we notice it. So really this, this identify the problem and fix the problem. That's the integration we are, you know, what I see really on the roadmap and what we are currently working on. And Rudy, um, you just mentioned the roadmap and I know uh, there's so many things that are planned to make the, uh, the tool more powerful. Is there anything else you can share with us that is on the horizon of how you plan to expand the offering, expand um, the technology um, for, for yourself and the clients? Yeah, you know, you know, the big challenge in process mining always is to get, uh, to get the right data, to get the data right. So this is already a challenge on its own when you talk, when you think about SAP, I mean, we are talking about 170, 200,000 database tables. I always say that probably only Germans can come up with a system like this, but it's a real challenge. But uh, even a bigger challenge is if you think about, about tools which are used in a process execution like Excel, like email, tools not leaving any digital footprints behind. So how do, you, how do you capture this part of the process if there's no data available? So we just recently introduced something we call task mining. So it's a small agent you install um, on the laptop or desktop of your, of your customer, of your employees. And for a limited period of time, we actually record what people are doing over there. And then now imagine you combine the data from backend systems, you know, the, the structured data that is clearly recorded in the databases and you take task mining, the unstructured data from front end and you combine this. With this, you will not only understand you know, what needs to be improved, but exactly how to do it, because you know what people did in the front end. And this is where, where a lot of um, automation happens. So you know, this, this integration, so when we talk about, about process discovery at UiPath, we talk about much more than just process mining. Process mining is only one of, in total, four different tools we have today, where we can really look into the processes, look into the data, and provide total transparency, you know, to identify what the bottlenecks are, what the problems are, what should be and what should not be automated. Because let's face it, if you discover fraud, you certainly don't want to automate fraud, stuff like that. So you really get transparency. You guys get transparency. You can you can help your customer to fix the problem, and then you know we can decide what should be automated, and then we have the the right technology available. And after we have automated it. After we transform the process, we go to the monitoring stage. And if there's anything wrong, then we can again control, actively control the process and fix the problem. So that's the bigger picture, you know, how we look at process discovery, process mining in combination with RPA at UiPath. That's really exciting. Hey, Dino, I, I have a different question for you. You know, we have this, 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 this technology to visualize the processes, to really understand what's going on. So, you know, again, my picture of X-ray, but how do you know if what we see on the picture is, is good or it's bad? How can, you, how can you estimate or how can you really judge, um, you know, what we see and if it needs to be improved or not? How do you do it? Yeah, and thank you so much for the question, Rudy. Um, this, this, is, this is what we as PwC then um, do for a living, and we have been doing this for a long time. So there's not a one size fits all response to say, right, my process now looks a certain way and it has to now in the future look another certain way. But there's ways to, to identify how we can actually have a great, a frictionless, a, a seamless process. So one way, Rudy, how we've been doing this for a long, long time is something that we call benchmarking. So we have an understanding by, you know, the industry, the jurisdiction, you know, the size of company and all other factors of like, what does good actually look like, right? How is a process supposed to perform? What are good control standards, right? How do I mitigate my risks? So using some of that intel and knowledge to know what should, you know, my process look like in the future will help us to actually use, you know, the current state and come up with a great target state. A Digital process in itself is not necessarily the right response. It may be a better response, right? So it's better to have something automated than 
you know, being done manually. But just because I'm, I automate something really doesn't mean necessarily that is the optimum process for my organization. So really combining what you just talked about around process mining, understand what's going on in the organization, task mining to add on and to complement, to understand these nuances, some of the manual tasks that are being performed, now overlaying it with, here are my benchmarks, here's what I should be doing, helps me to design and hopefully automate the future state process. That, yeah, that sounds really exciting. I mean, this, this benchmarking thing, this, I think it's great. And that's, you know, again, why we enjoy so much working with you guys, because we are a software company. So we have, we have some nice tools, um, but we need this experience. And you, you, know, you, you said that you do this for, for a living for many, many years. So that's really where I think that this, this, this cooperation between PwC and, and UiPath provides, provides such a value. Yeah, really exciting. And Rudy, one, one question I, I'd like to ask is um, the concept of task mining. So the idea of uh, having desktop recording agents gather data to understand mm -hmm. what's happening on my user's desktop. Do you mind um, elaborating on a how it actually works and how easy or difficult it is to deploy those? And then how do you actually link my desktop recording you know, output to my process mining data? Very good question. So first of all, what we typically see is like a, cron like a, like a logical order. So you start, if you have, you know, if you really need more transparency about your process, you start with process mining to first understand the big picture. And then you may identify one part of the process or certain activities as your, your bottlenecks or really your challenges. And then think about task mining like a microscope or like a magnifying glass. You look closer into one activity to better understand what's, you know, what's the problem here? Why do we have a bottleneck? And then the way it works, you just set up a little project. It's, it's you know, on, on the server and you invite people to participate in the meeting. And this is really important because it's, it's not, our, you know, not our intention to spy on people. We, we don't care about what people do. We only want to understand why the process is, isn't working or why these activities take so long. So we invite people. They have to download a little recorder and then we start the recording. So for a period of, let's say, maybe five days, we record what your financial department, what your purchasing department is actually doing. And you have to whitelist applications. So it doesn't mean that we are, we are watching everything that happens on the, on the computer, but only selected applications. Each window will be, clear, will be clearly marked with like this one is being recorded. And let's say we are recording the, the browser and you want to check your your bank account over lunch, no problem, or Facebook, you can always, you know, pause the recording as long as you need, and then you start it again, you know, to record what you do. So it's it's all transparent. There's no spying on people. It's not a continuous thing. Um, even if we get some requests from, from time to time to do this continuously, that's not what we do today. So we record what people do over a period of five days, and then we have a very, very fancy AI algorithm which will take maybe again one or two days to analyze the data. So, you know, typically we collect hundreds of thousands of activities, clicks, keystrokes, um, screenshots. We perform OCR on the screenshots really to understand what, what's happening there. And the system will come back with repetitive patterns. And these patterns most likely are, you know, areas or, pot or possibilities for, for, for automation. And then you look into it and you see, okay, this group of actions actually is what, let's say, a proof invoice actually is. So if you see a, pro a process invoice or a proof invoice is the bottleneck in your, in your process mining, you go into the details and you will discover maybe the 20 actions that actually are representing this one activity in process mining. So that's the way we, we, we connect it. So process mining, again, is the past. And then you kick off the task mining project and you record from today for maybe five days to better understand what's happening there. That's, that's the way it works. So it's, you know, it's, it's very low impact, I would say, on the daily work because people don't have to do anything, just do their normal job. And after five days, we will get more transparency. 
Hey, Dino, I have a, again another question for you. You know, we, we discuss financial industry and when, when I talk to, to potential customers or existing customers for process mining, everybody talks about SAP. Everybody talks about order to cash, purchase to pay, you know, the classics. And of course, these processes are really, really important. But when I think about the financial industry, you know, I'm, and, and I'm not a financial expert, but can you give me some good examples about, you know, really interesting processes a little bit, you know, outside of the classics in the financial industry that might be interesting for process mining? Yeah, and thank you so much, Rudy. You see, that's a question where I light up and where I yes, believe the potential really lies. So I could give many, many examples here and maybe Rudy going far, we're gonna have, you know, deep dive sessions into that. But maybe let me just talk about the, uh, you know, one that we recently um, worked on in trade settlements. So trade settlements, Think about a financial transaction and it has to settle with both parties. So it is a process that banks and financial institutions do on a high frequency basis. It is obviously crucial to their customer experience and to the effectiveness of their business. And this one, right, a high volume process, you know, and if you talk to experts in the industry, they do struggle with a lot of breaks and a lot of failures and it causes a lot of manual work. So it's been a very powerful use case to actually showcase, hey, we need to know what's going on to actually, you know, automate and make the process, you know, more effective. But the reason, Rudy, that I get so excited about this particular case that's a little bit outside the norm of what we've talked about in the past is it's not just a process that, again, is high frequency and we need to solve for a lot of issues today. The industry in itself is actually transforming. So within the industry right now, there's, you know, depending on the product, it's about a two-day frame. We call this T2 settlements, where there's a certain amount of time where we settle a, a transaction. There's time to actually, albeit it's not very, you know, um, you know, favorable, but we do have time to make up for certain breaks and certain manual tasks. The industry is actually moving from T2 to T1, so cutting my times in half, to eventually going to T0 closer to real time. So I don't just have to now understand, hey, how do I get my T2, my current settlement times right? I also have to think forward, right? To keep up with the industry to say like, I'm gonna have to cut these times in half and at some point go to almost real time. This is where, you know, we see this huge potential to help organizations and especially financial organizations to understand what the current state is, to understand the real bottlenecks. What's driving my throughput times? What is driving, you know, my, my um, you know, risks, or let's say, where are my, my mitigating controls to, to uh, you know, manage my risks? These are all questions that I need to answer in order to not just get my business more effective and efficient today, but to get ready for the future. And that's a great example where our clients actually, you know, are very intrigued to say like, hey, you know, we have to get today right, and please help us with it, but how do we even get ready for the future here? And that's where process mining, as you can imagine, Rudy, is such a powerful use case and such a good conversation to have. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we really touched up on this. It's not only for initially understanding, but actually for start monitoring this as you are, as you are cutting down your throughput time. So you don't want to, you know, come back and, and analyze it over and over again. You simply want to connect your data source and keep analyzing it as you, as you progress, right? Yeah, that, that. And okay, it's got it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. I understand your excitement about this process. Absolutely. And it's in the financial services industry. You know, there, there's this, this use case that I just talked about around trade settlements. There's many other use cases out there where, you know, not just, you know, your internal organization may be changing, but the industry is changing. And I think those are, you know, definitely use cases to, to, look, uh, to look at and you know, try to get this paradigm shift, get away from trying to understand a process based on anecdotal inputs and get to the data, get to the, you know, the wealth of your data and your organization. That's kind of like one of the messages you know, we give every day to clients. Absolutely. And you know, um, you know, it sounds like we have enough content for a few more sessions we can, we can maybe do in the future. But I think for today, we should close this up because I, I need to jump to my next meeting pretty soon. So thank you so much for, for, for having me. It was really, really fun talking to you. Thank and, you so much, Rudy. Yeah. 
I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Definitely, we'll do that. You know, have a great day, everybody. Thank you for, for watching this, this short recording. And if you have any questions, reach out to Dino, reach out to me. You will, of course, you find both of us on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. And everybody have a good, have a good day and a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.